Yes Friends, this is Inside Out. Inside Out is presented by HTC, here to connect. And Magnolia's at 26th for good old-fashioned southern comfort food, where mama eats. From the Tobacco Museum of Mullins to Copper's Restaurant of Conway, St. Christopher's Children of Georgetown County, New Directions of Horry County, and Open Curtain Theater of Myrtle Beach, we're going inside out of Horry, Georgetown, and Marion Counties. Come join us! We're getting ready to meet up with an outstanding nonprofit organization, one that's been around for a long time, making a big difference. It's New Directions, and they service Horry County. Meet Kathy Jenkins. She heads it all up, and she loves what she does. And I guess you've been here 10 years now? Yes, yes. Started in the very beginning um, when New Directions was first launched, and, um, and I've been there for 10 years. Sum it up. What do you do? Because a lot of people think you just service women in need. Well, we, um, our, our actual mission is to help people recover from the crises of homelessness, poverty, and addiction. And we serve homeless men, homeless women, homeless families with children, and homeless veterans in four different facilities. You have really grown. How yes, many employees have. do you have now, Kathy? We actually run these shelters 24-7, 365 with 14 full-time people and six part-time and a lot of volunteers. Do you still continue to need volunteers? And if so, what are some of the things that our friends out there can do for you? Our biggest volunteer opportunity continues to be the dinner hour at the men's shelter kitchen. Um, we not only serve the, the men who live at the shelter and are participating in our program, but we actually serve anybody in the community who's hungry. It takes a lot of people to do that because we're, we're really talking about close to 150 to 200 people every single night. I understand so. that there are a lot of people who have come through this program over the years who wind up being able to get rid of their addiction issues and they've come to work for you or even volunteer. Yes, you know, I, I often say that, that one of the greatest compliments that we get is when somebody finishes our program and comes back to volunteer. And, um, and so we have a number of people who have done that. We also have a number of people who have been through our program and, and come back and work for us. I was looking at your website and very impressed with the last page, which shows the incredible amount of people you helped last year. When someone comes to us and they're homeless, they very often don't know what to do next how to get started, how to get back on their feet. And one of the biggest issues that we almost always run into is lack of credentials to, um, to do anything that they might want to do. An ID, a driver's license, a birth certificate, a social security card. So we operate our shelters with um, case managers. We don't pretend that we can do everything. We partner with everybody in the community who offers a service that our clients can benefit from. And then our case managers are able to connect them with the right uh, partners to be able to get the um, anything that they need to be able to get a job, to get into permanent housing, to get into long-term recovery, or to even get reunited with their family that may even live somewhere else. It's always great too when we're talking to nonprofits to remind the friends at home how you are funded. We um, we have about fifty percent of our um, of our annual budget is provided in grant funding, but primarily foundations, local foundations in the city of Myrtle Beach. The other fifty percent comes from individuals, community clubs, corporate, and of course our um, our two big fundraisers. And you have a fundraiser, I know, usually in August and yes. then some others during the year. And you're looking for more. So if anyone out there wants to throw a fundraiser for New Directions, <laughs> Kathy wants to hear from you. But as we wrap up, this room is beautiful. And the whole place has been painted recently by a wonderful organization, Phyllis Inn. 
Westgate Resorts Foundation and our local Westgate Resorts, they do multiple things for us every year. They are a grant funder. They participate in our Compassion Through Fashion event. And this year we were selected as, as the group in Myrtle Beach for their 40 acts of kindness. And so they did 40 acts of kindness for the 40th anniversary. And the team here at Westgate Resorts came in and totally renovated and painted our women's shelter, and it's just beautiful. They turned it into a, a real home for people, a, a real cozy place. And as they were celebrating their 40th anniversary and doing for you, I understand they won some money. They absolutely did. So it was a contest with the 40 Acts of Kindness across all of the Westgate resorts, and our local team won and presented us with an additional uh, donation of a $10,000 check. That's the kind of sponsors and partners New Directions needs. If you would like to be one of them, or even if you've got something small to donate or a matter of a couple of hours a week, call Kathy Jenkins. She'd love to hear from you. Right, Kathy? That's right. Copper's Restaurant of Conway and St. Christopher's Children of Georgetown County are coming up next on Inside Out. From Merle's Inlet to Marion, from the golf courses to the area's gorgeous beaches, HTC is here to connect you with the largest fiber optic network in the area. We are here to help our communities, here to help you benefit as a member of our local cooperative, and here to empower the moments that are important in your life. We're HTC, and we're here to connect you to your world. For one night only, the Long Bay Symphony presents Dancing Queen, the music of ABBA. It'll be an unforgettable evening with the rock band Jeans and Classics celebrating the music that will have you on your feet, the music of ABBA. Tickets are now available for Saturday night, March 25th, 7 p.m. at the Myrtle Beach High School Music and Arts Center. For tickets, call 843-448-8379 or go online at longbaysymphony.com. Check this out. Doesn't this salmon look great? We are at Copper's Restaurant in downtown Conway. They've been around for 20 years. It's Charles and his family's 20th anniversary. This is Charles Hurl. And I remember coming in here when they first opened. He was like five years old and I used to flirt with him. Then he got to be 10 and 15 and I'd still flirt with him. And now he's too old for me to flirt with him. But anyway, yeah. Charles, it's so great to be with you. Great to have you, Diane. Tell us a little bit about this year and how exciting it is to be the 20th anniversary. This year, 20th anniversary, we're going to have a lot of specialty cocktails, seasonal, of course, um, a lot of new specials. Every weekend we try to have uh, different specials for everyone in downtown Conway and a lot of repeat customers, I can say that for sure. And your bar customers, I think, might even be equally as loyal as you pack that patio, especially yeah. in spring and summer. Our patio, the Live music has brought a lot of people um, to the area as to coppers, um, and they continue to return every weekend. Let's talk about some of the entrees because the smell of this blackened salmon and scallops is just making me hungry. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, it's blackened salmon there, uh, fresh sea scallops, um, zucchini and squash. We have a cauliflower puree as well. Um, and it's topped off with a raspberry fig pork sauce. Mm, who's the yeah. chef now? Um, our chef, Derek Jackson, he's been here for all 20 years uh, and continues to help us in the kitchen. What's your hottest selling entree? Um, our hottest selling entree, I would say, is probably our Charleston chicken stack, boneless chicken breast grilled, uh, very simple, grilled peppers, onions, a uh, lot of Monterey Jack cheese and bacon on there. Um, it's definitely a favorite for dinner. How about lunch specials? Tell me about lunch. Lunch specials, we have our lunch buffet um, for 11 to 2. Um, always have fried chicken. Uh, we try to follow my grandma's recipe on that. Um, and a lot of Southern food, for sure. How about this dish in front of you? Because I asked if that was mashed potatoes, grits, or you said ravioli. Yum. Yes, that is our four cheese ravioli um, in a 
cream marsala sauce, grilled chicken, asparagus, and uh, button mushrooms there. Mmm, yes. that looks wonderful. Tell me about this one. Uh, we, that's our shrimp scampi, traditional shrimp scampi, garlic, butter, white wine. You can't really go wrong with that. Definitely a go-to for dinner. Mm, and I love those tiny little thin noodles. Yes, the angel hair pasta for that sure. That can't be too fattening, those noodles. No, not at all. <laughs> and then for people who just want a little bit of um, lighter fare. Yeah, that's going to be our cucumber wrap salad. As you can see, it's thinly uh, wrapped with the cucumber, mixed greens, carrot, blue cheese, um, and pecans, as well as some bacon on the side. Cause You've been at this, well, your family's been at it for 20 years. Yeah. The restaurant business is uh, kind of in your blood. You have no choice. You don't have any time to date or get out. No, it's definitely a full-time job. Well, more than a full-time job, really. Um, I'm here constantly, but it's a, it's a blessing and a pleasure to do it. So let's fill everyone in on the hours of operation. All right, Diane, so we're open for lunch Tuesday through Friday, 11 to 2, as well as on Sundays, 11 to 2. Um, and then for dinner, we're open Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights. That's from 5 to 9.30 for dinner. Happy hour. Happy hours, 5 to 7, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights. Um, and then, of course, we do have the live music on the weekends as well on our back patio. And how do we know who's entertaining? Um, I direct people to the Facebook page. We constantly are posting who's playing for the, each day of the weekend. Um, and it also has a lot of pictures, our menu as well. And so this is Coppers. Give us the location. It's on 201 Laurel Street in downtown Conway. And remember, it is just a wonderful family-owned restaurant. Been around for 20 years with the same chef for 20 years. Now, when you've got the same chef, you know you're doing something very right. Thank yes, you so sure. much, Charles. Thank you, Diane. Let's eat. Yeah. Get us a fork. <laughs> Somebody get us a fork. <laughs>
So usually an average, um, they're on the wait list. It could be anywhere from one to two years. Some we get them in right away when funding is available. We try to send two kids a month to Dr. Pence for treatment. And then every February, we actually do follow-up surveys with the kids and with the nurses. And we use that information to improve the program, but also to um, seek more grant funds. We have a lot of community supporters, the Bunnell Foundation, the Yawkey Foundation funds our critical care orthodontic program, and then a lot of generous donors, which we appreciate, community support also from some of, some of the local churches. And then we're always doing certain campaigns. Palmetto Giving Day is our biggest fundraiser every year in May. Now let's talk about this resale store. I love it here. Well, thanks, and we love it too. We're just getting an outpouring of donations um, at our store. Everything you see here has been donated by this wonderful community. And then when you come in and shop and purchase things, you're actually helping clothe the children. Our store is run by our resale store manager, Diana, and then Kelly, our operations assistant, floats between the office and the store. So I'm not a one-man team. You I'm, need lots of volunteers yes, to run this and place. And we also need some volunteers to come in and sort the donations and everything is clean and it's all ironed and pressed. And people love to shop here because they know they're getting good quality. We get new items in, still have the tags. I saw some really neat purses, shoes, jewelry, the work. So when you're cleaning out your closet, remember St. Christopher's Children's Resale Store. And one more thing, your location. 12017 Ocean Highway in Polly's Island next to Waccamaw Interiors at the corner of Midway King Shopping Center, Martin Luther King. When you're heading south towards Polly's, they're on the right. And an angel organization, which means they're among the best. Thanks, Kathy. Thanks, Diane. Right after this break, the South Carolina Tobacco Museum in Mullins. From the Grand Strand to the farmland, from Main Street to the marshes, HTC is here to connect you to what matters most in your life. We're here to bring people together, here to play, and here to empower our communities with the largest fiber optic network in the area. Go with HTC. We are here to connect you to your world. Lift your spirit with the Carolina Master Chorale in Hope Like a River, Great Songs of Faith. Masterworks composers, iconic arrangements, and classic hymns will raise your eyes to the heavens. Saturday, April 22nd at 4 p.m., Trinity United Methodist Church in North Myrtle Beach, and Sunday, April 23rd, 4 p.m. at First Presbyterian Church in Myrtle Beach. For tickets, call 843-444-5774 or go online at carolinamasterchorale.com. This segment of Inside Out is brought to you by Magnolia's at 26th for good old-fashioned southern comfort food, where mama eats. Well, have y'all ever been at the South Carolina Tobacco Museum? Because that's where we are right now, and this is a beautiful place. Meet Rhonda Bain. We're in Mullins, of course, because this is where tobacco was king. Absolutely. When Thank did you it for all coming. begin? Um, well, actually, our museum um, started around 97, 98, so we've been here almost 25 years. Tobacco actually started here in the 1890s, though, so we've been um, tobacco since the 1890s. Um, we had our first auction in 1895 and we ran on the auction system from 1895 to 1994, so 99 years of auctioning. We were the largest auction, tobacco auction town in the entire state of South Carolina. And just to give you a little bit of, of trivia about it, in the late 30s, one year, 101 million pounds of tobacco um, was um, auctioned in the state of South Carolina, and 42 million of that was done here in Mullins. So why do you think this was the biggest auction area? Well, I think the railroad had something to do with it. It. Um, 
from what um, people have told me that have been here, um, the tobacco executives, the tobacco buyers would actually come and stay in Mullins during tobacco season. So you had everyone right here. Um, depending on who you asked, there were um, tobacco auction houses all up and down the street. Um, if you um, come into town, you better know which one you're going to go to because if not, they were going to grab your mule and um, try to bring you in, bring you in, and bring you in here and um, make sure you went to their their warehouse. So I think it just kind of grew over time. There was so much money and so much good good things flowing through Mullins. It just kind of kept on kept on going. So even though you weren't the biggest producer of tobacco, you had the most auction houses in the state. Wow. We did. If even if, if you go down our main street right now, you will see Golden Leaf Antique Market. And that was one of our many, many auction houses here in the town limits of Mullins. Let's talk about these great exhibits. What <laughs> what's the hottest hottest one? Well, I always tell people that um, I don't know what I would do if something bad happened because I would try to save the barn because the barn is absolutely, the barn back here is absolutely my favorite exhibit. Um, it is actually an old tobacco barn. The um, Rogers family, now known as Mary Lynn Henson, that owns the Ace Hardware, her family, um, that's her family barn. So the front and the sides were actually off of her property and you can go inside that barn and there is curing tobacco um, inside hanging. So you can actually see what it was like when people used to uh, use the old barns. Cool, right. how about Roscoe? Let me tell you about Roscoe. Uh, Roscoe is one of the, my first day on the job, you know, you kind of look and you try to see what is going to be your favorite thing. And I fell in love with Roscoe. Roscoe was actually named by our town children. It was a contest and you got to help name the mule of the museum. So his name is spelled R-O-S-C-O. -O. I just love Roscoe. Well, yeah, he's certainly a feature when you walk in. And then there's another whole wing down here and it's very clean in here and people would love it. How is this all funded? Um, we are actually a city owned museum at this point. So we are almost, and I say almost because not quite, but we're almost 100% city um, funded. Um, so when you come when you come to Mullins, when you, you are actually helping to fund our museum, when you eat in Mullins, when you spend in Mullins, you are helping us as a museum and as an institution keep going. The hospitality tax. Yes, absolutely. And then of course, uh, the museum is free. Mm -hmm. People can make donations, we hope that they will, mm -hmm. but it's really a great education for people who know nothing about the tobacco of yesteryear. Absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. We will, we'll, I will walk you through and take you all the way through the growing process, all the way through the curing process to auction, and then um, we'll take a nice swing through the old farmhouse here um, in the building. And what days are you open? We are open Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday from nine to twelve and one to four. Now on Wednesdays we do close at twelve. It is a great place, and I hope people will come to Mullins. Don't just you know, happen upon it. Come to Mullins, make it a destination. They've got great restaurants, beautiful homes, and needless to say, a great free South Carolina Tobacco Museum. Rhonda, thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Oh, thank I you, thank love you, it here. thank you. It's beautiful. Next on Inside Out, it's Open Curtain Theater of Myrtle Beach. Mama loves Magnolias, and you will too. It's where the Anderson family farm comes to the table. There's an all-you-can-eat breakfast, lunch, dinner, Saturday and Sunday brunch buffet, salad bar, homemade desserts, all served by our staff. Mama's right, you can't cook it this cheap. Ooh. And that ice cream machine guaranteed to produce smiles. Banquet space available too. Magnolias for good old Southern comfort food and hospitality at its finest. 26th Avenue North and Ocean Boulevard in Myrtle Beach. We're in Myrtle Beach on Burkale Road at the Moose Lodge. The Moose Lodge has just got done housing a new theater company, Open Curtain Theater. This is the founder. This is Steve Marriott. And I've seen him on stage before. He's very good at what he does. But then again, he has been a stand-up comic in a previous life. What's easier, <laughs> comedy or theater? Uh, probably theater is much easier than stand-up. Uh, stand-up, you got to think on your feet a little bit more. Uh, theater, I get to know somebody else's lines. They, they pretty much tell me what I'm supposed to say. So what is this like starting your own theater company? You just did California Suite. Uh, it's, it's scary. 
at the same time uh, because you're starting a venture and you don't know how the public's going to react and I will say that uh, the public reacted very well. Uh, we did California Suite, as you mentioned, which is was our debut show. Uh, we held auditions and we had 35 people come out for that audition. Terrific! Uh, ticket sales went great, the cast was wonderful, uh, the reaction of the people that came to the show, all wonderful. Uh, really cemented me in my heart the knowing that, okay, we did make the right choice here. Uh, I can only thank the people that have helped me through this. Uh, because you don't you don't do this by yourself right it's, it's teamwork and we got to get the community out to support the absolutely. rest of your season i saw your season it looks really good why don't you fill us in on what else we can expect coming up so the next show coming up is curtain up uh, it starts in april it's april 13th is the start of the show we run eight shows uh six nighttime shows uh, that start at 7 30 and then two matinees that are sunday at three o'clock and our show after that is a Sam Shepard uh, production. It's uh, True West, which is near to me because I'm hoping to be cast in that one. And then following that, we go into uh, September, the 39 Steps. Uh, 39 Steps, it's a, it's a very funny farcical comedy. It has uh, almost every famous scene in Hitchcock movies is incorporated into the show. Oh, so I bet I, that is good. I really look forward to that. That should be great. And then we finish it all off in December with a twist of Christmas Carol, uh, which is actually about a gentleman that owns a, uh, a bar in Texas and he falls off a ladder and uh, goes into a coma and he's visited by three ghosts. Uh, so this season is jam packed with fun. I really look forward to all the new members that come out, all the auditions, and really opening the door for all the audience to come in and see us. I imagine, Steve, that you'll post all the auditions on Facebook or on your website because um, that's the name of the game. Sometimes you've got somebody in your head for a part, but then somebody even better shows up. And, and that's exactly what happened in California Suite. I came in thinking I knew who would probably the audition and who was going to be in what parts. And, and some people came in and just wowed me and, and you make adjustment, adjustments. And uh, we, we've grown it into a family. We have some great supporting people around us. Uh, our publicist, Brian Kuhn, he does a great job as far as getting the word out there, getting tickets sold. Our, our set designer, uh, she is a wonderful, she, she's nonstop. Um, they really keep us going and it's, and it's the audience that'll keep us going. So uh, we are not a one and done. We're gonna be back here next year. Uh, we're gonna have all new shows and you're gonna be able to see all that and yes auditions will be on our, our website and they will be uh, posted and all the new shows will be posted and we have specials right now for anybody that wants to buy season tickets you're actually getting one show free out of the deal because a season ticket is a hundred dollars and uh, each show ticket is twenty five dollars so you're gonna get five shows for the price of four so what about the people who Maybe they don't think that they're hams and don't want to be on stage, Steve, but they love theater passionately and want to be involved. We need volunteers. We need people that want to help work on the set. We need people that, hey, they probably have some old furniture in their garage. Maybe they can donate that to us. Uh, we need ushers. We need sound people. We need light people. And, you know, yes. because, listen, the more helping hands I have, the, you know, the less I have to do, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. He said it well. And so may I just say, break a leg, my friend. Thank you. Open Curtain Theater here at the Moose Lodge in Myrtle Beach. Go to the website and check out Steve's entire season. And just know, as he said, he's not a, what did you say, a one-shot pony, so That's to speak. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> We're here to stay. Next month, we'll check out summer employment in Myrtle Beach historic revitalization in Marion County. The Ainer High School Jazz Band, something fishy in Georgetown, and as always, a rural segment too. Join us for Inside Out as we travel inside and out of Ori, Georgetown, and Marion Counties. See you next month. Inside Out is presented by HTC, here to connect. And Magnolia's at 26th, for good old-fashioned southern comfort food, where mama eats.